Welcome. Today we're going to discover how to build failover cluster instances with Snap Center for SQL Server. A Windows failover cluster uses shared storage. Typically, this shared storage is on a SAN environment. When a SQL Server instance is called on the cluster, the system and user databases are required to be on the shared storage. This allows the cluster to move the SQL instance to any server or node in the cluster wherever you request, or if one of the nodes experiences issues. There is only one copy of the data, but the network name and SQL Server service for the instance can be made active from any cluster node. Here's the workflow you'll see in the following demonstration. Let's begin. We first must enable failover clustering features for all the servers that participate in the cluster that we're going to create. In this demo, we'll enable both SC Cluster 01 and SC Cluster 02. After enabling the failover cluster feature for both servers, we're going to create a cluster by starting a failover cluster manager. Right click and select Create Cluster. Select Next, then enter both SC Cluster 01 and SC Cluster 02. Select Next to run configuration validation. Configuration validation is now completed. Provide cluster name. Since we'll add our shared disk by using Snap Center, we'll disable the Add All Eligible Storage to the Cluster option. Select Next. Cluster creation has now been completed. We will now create all shared disks using Snap Center. First, we must add our cluster to Snap Center. Select Host. Select the Add icon. Provide the host name. As you can see, Snap Center recognizes that SC Cluster 02 is part of our cluster. SC automatically selects the Microsoft Windows plugin. Since we don't have SQL Server installed at this time, we will not select the Microsoft SQL Server plugin. We can track our progress by navigating to the monitor page. Our cluster has been added to Snap Center, and now we'll create a shared disk by selecting host. We'll now establish iSCSI communication with our stored virtual machine by selecting iSCSI session at the top. Set the host and SVM, and establish the session with the target portal address filled in. Do the same for all nodes of the cluster. On the Disks tab, we'll add new shared disks to our cluster by selecting Add at the top right. What we're doing here is creating a shared disk for the SQL Server binary files for the cluster. Give a LUN path a name and select Next. Select the disk type to Share Disk. We'll give our new disk a drive letter of G and a size of 35 gigabytes. Map the newly created LUN using iSCSI, selecting the session just created. Be sure to select all nodes in the cluster. Select Finish to create the disk. We 
We're going to repeat this process for the data LUN. However, we'll map all these disks with the mount point of drive G. This will allow the failover cluster to move disks from one node to another as a group. Again, select our iSCSI initiator when mapping the LUN and do this for all nodes. Repeat this process for log and log host directory. If we navigate back to our failover cluster manager, we can see all of our newly created disks. We'll now run our SQL Server FCI setup by selecting New SQL Server Failover Cluster Installation. Select Next through the setup prompts. In the feature selection, we'll select Database Engine Services under the Instance Features. After that, give the server network name an instance ID. As you can see, the only drive available for SQL Server to install the binary file is drive G. In network configuration, select IPv4 for the cluster. We'll give the proper login information for service accounts, and we'll check the Grant Perform Volume Maintenance Task Privilege to SQL Server Database Engine option. This feature will allow SQL Server to more quickly provision data files. We're now going to add another node to our failover cluster instance by using Remote Desktop to connect to the other node where we'll perform the setup. Select Installation and select Add Node to a SQL Server failover cluster instead of New SQL Server failover cluster installation. Select Next to the setup prompts. As you can see, the setup recognizes the failover cluster from node 2. Again, under Service Accounts, grant volume maintenance task privileges to the SQL Server engine. Now we've just added another node to our failover cluster instance. In the Failover Cluster Manager, we'll test failover for our cluster by moving our SQL Server to a different node. Under Disks, we can see the newly assigned owner under the Owner Node column. Back in Snap Center, we'll now install a SQL Server plugin to both nodes of the cluster by navigating to the host page. Select Modify on the top right. Once Snap Center recognizes the cluster, we'll select the Microsoft SQL Server package to be installed. We can monitor the progress of the installation in the monitor page by double-clicking the job in question. As you can see, Snap Center deploys the SQL Server plugin to both nodes that participate in the cluster at the same time. Because we installed SQL Server after the hosts were added to Snap Center, we'll now have to refresh our resources so that our Snap Center will recognize the failover cluster instance. We can now configure the host log directory from the host page. Under FCI Instance Log Directory, we'll browse for the shared SI disk we mapped earlier and select Apply. As you can see, setting up a failover cluster instance using Snap Center to create a shared disk is fast and easy. Please look for more videos on SQL Server plugin for Snap Center on the NetApp channel.